Hello, I'm Samuel Thomas. Welcome to another program, Between the Lines. This show is going to give you a better understanding of how to motivate the youth in your church, probably even in your home. We've got somebody who's been dealing with young people for a long time, Randy Fischel, the editor of Guide Magazine. He's written a book. It's entitled, Ready to Go, 15 Heart-Changing Programs for Youth and Young Adults. And he's going to explain to us just what this means to you. Well, thank you so much, Samuel, for having me here. And it's always a pleasure to talk about youth and this particular book, I suppose, if I were to say that if there's one thing that makes it a little different than some of the others, it's that they really are ready to go. And it's the title that, that, that speaks volumes, as it were, about where I wanted to take this particular collection of programs. When I was a youth and young adult pastor in Seattle, Washington, I, of course, was looking for programming material and how can I really dig a little deeper with some of these young people, both high school and college age. And I didn't find a lot on the market out there that at least not the kind of material that was, was ready to take those students to a level of exploration of scripture that I wanted to take them to. And so those programs in there, a lot of them came out of that experience, so they've kind of been field tested as it, as it were. And when I say ready to go, literally, if you happen to be working with high schoolers, uh, young adults, college age, you could pick up Ready to Go and, and have a program in front of you that would make your audience think that you had probably done a little more preparation than, than you maybe have done. And that's okay because I did some of the preparation and, and I know that, that you want to connect with your young people in a way that can perhaps change their lives for eternity. And that's really what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Now when I, when I put that book together and um, put those particular uh, programs into a collection, it is not your average everyday um, let's talk about dating kind of thing. There, you're going to find some things on relationships in there, but but I wanted to get to a little different into a different venue of of material. So we take a look at such things as situation ethics, overcoming fear. We look at uh, one of the programs in it is called McSpirituality. You've heard of McDonald's and McMansions, and I said, you know, some of us want to sometimes to get to a spiritual level a little quicker than what we're really prepared to. And so I said, let's do a program called McSpirituality. So we look at what does it really take? What level of devotion? Is there any work to this thing called spirituality? Later on in the book, we, we get into uh, the topics, topics of uh, witnessing in the workplace. Sometimes even at high school level, a young person might be flipping burgers or doing something else and they might say, hey, you know, there's no opportunity for me to make a difference to anybody here. A program called Witness in the Workplace is uh, put together to demonstrate that, hey, maybe there's a little more opportunity there than you think there is. Randy, I want to give you a challenge. I had a friend recently contacted me and shared with me that their friend, okay, uh, took their child to uh, an evangelical church, another faith, of course, and they were learning whole chapters, even books of the Bible, from memory. But when she reflected on her Sabbath school, her Sabbath school class was only learning memory verses. Mm -hmm. is, is, is really getting our young people in the Bible that much of a challenge? And, and why do we see that kind of distinction between our church focusing on a verse here and a verse there, and then churches like that really mm -hmm. pushing the Word of God for their young people, same age, you know? Why do you think that is? A couple of things come to mind. One is that, first of all, we used to be known as, quote, the people of the book. That book being the Bible. I think through, uh, a, through the struggle of trying to keep young people uh, engaged in a meaningful spiritual experience, perhaps we have drifted sometimes maybe a little bit too far toward entertainment, perhaps. Maybe we've neglected a little bit of the um, what we what we should call the foundation foundational concepts, and that would be scripture memory. Interestingly, my wife was just recently talking to me about how she feels called right now in her life to 
actually develop a scripture memorization ministry. And so this is on people's hearts right now. It's interesting you should bring that up. What I've tried to do, incidentally, in the book Ready to Go, is to, to uh, marry scripture with real life because I think that's what it's all about. I was telling somebody uh, on the trip here, actually, chatting with somebody, and, and I was saying, you know what is really... Um, keeps me connected as much as anything to scripture is is prophetic fulfillment as I, as I look at the scope of prophetic um, the, the, the messianic prophecies and the different things there that connects with my with with real life those things really happen and thereby I know that those things are going to happen in the future as well and so when we do neglect scripture and scripture memorization of course we are in some ways neglecting uh, the our, our opportunity to connect with reality. I read a book recently called uh, Velvet Elvis, of all things, wonderful book on spirituality. And this person was saying that the, the real the real crux of the of the matter is connecting scripture with everyday life. Sometimes those situations are going to be challenging. Other times they're going to be uh, celebrations. But scripture has so much to say about all of those. Uh, settings in life that if we neglect it we do neglect it to our own peril. Now when we talk about embracing scripture to use it as a strong underpinning for our youth and their development is that something that we need to do deliberately or do we need to facilitate that through just pulling the principles out of scripture how are you suggesting that we achieve that? Well Yes and yes is how I would answer that. You have to have both. I just recently have been been studying uh, learning styles and uh, I just came across a diagram and some of your our viewers here will, will be familiar with Gardner's Eight Intelligences and some different uh, uh, educational paradigms. But one that struck me is that uh, in the learning pyramid is this particular one that 90% uh, retention of material happens when you learn something hands-on and then share it with somebody else versus 5% retention for example in lecture so when we take we take all of the above as as, as you you might uh, say it we we put all of the above together and then take that out and share it with somebody else you have a much much greater opportunity of having a life that has changed a young life that has uh, not only accepted spiritual principles but has chosen to share them with someone else. So when you take your book mm -hmm. and its programs, are you seeking to use the Bible exclusively as the, as the means, or are you using extra biblical sources as well? I'm using a lot of all of the above. Now, each program has a specific scripture section. I did not want any program to be completed without engaging in scripture. And so we specifically tie each program into relevant scriptures. Interestingly, a couple of programs have to do with scripture itself. One of the programs is, deals with the specific problem of, of how can I properly interpret scripture. And so we look at what is called contextualization. And how do I look at a, a scripture and, and not come off with some totally wacko theological concept? I want to make sure that, that even at the young age of high school, college, and maybe even a little bit younger. Being guide editor, I'm always concerned about it from there on up. But well, Scripture's important that we handle properly. 